So, it's kind of like I woke up from a slumber to find myself among all of my non-compliant friends. <laughs> so, so you're gonna find people like Indy, Cheeto, we got A-Rod, we got J-Hook. Got a couple more guys behind us. We probably have the entire Hobie lineup represented. Pro anglers, outbacks, 14s, 12s, etc. So kayak fishing is one of those activities where you can kind of kind of hang out while maintaining safe distance. And so, you know, we're not real tight, shaking hands or exchanging bodily fluids. Although I should mention I was propositioned by one of these guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was two. Hey, what's going on everyone? Coming at you to document a trip we did out of Marina Del Rey. And as with most of my videos, it's not going to be an action-packed thrill ride, but more along the lines of here's some information so that you can do something similar safely and efficiently. So hop in, let's go. In the past, I put together a video on how to launch out of NDR. And in short, there is not an easier launch that I know of in all of Southern California. It is a great venue for first timers. All right. so pretty straightforward just a matter of walking your boat to the ramp you got like three lanes plenty of room so j hook let's go over here okay so easy peasy right Launching into a harbor, so of course you're not dealing with swells. And the, uh, the thing you give up, of course, is you have to paddle from here, you know, maybe about a mile to get out into or onto the open ocean. So it's a trade-off, a little bit of safety, a little bit of distance. So one of the things I like to recommend to new people, especially if you're at a new spot, is once you launch, take a look back and get visually familiar with where you launched from. And then it's always a good idea to drop a waypoint on your GPS or fish finder right at the launch ramp. And then the other key waypoint I will show you later. So again, once you launch into the harbor, and right now we are inside the harbor. Okay, if you're new to a fish finder, you're gonna see stuff like this and go, wow, <laughs> tons of fish underneath. Trust me, don't bother. <laughs> this is not what you wanna drop down on. You'll see much better stuff. Okay, so at this point, let me give you guys and girls a bird's eye view using Google Earth. We are launching out of the MDR public boat launch ramp, which is right here. You could also launch out of Mother's Beach, but this is gonna add another probably half mile. And it's already a pretty good paddle from here to here, the open ocean. And then ultimately our destination is going to be the NDR artificial reef, which is here. They call it the artificial reef because it's not like a, a natural formation, a bunch of rocks or a reef, but rather they basically just dumped a bunch of big trash. And of course that's going to attract wildlife. Wow, look at this water. You know, what a crazy 2020 year we're having. First, it's the land-based COVID-19 situation, and on the water, we have this crazy phenomenon where this algae bloom, uh, some people call it the red tide, and I'm not a scientist, but I think this is not going to help fishing because, first of all, the algae eats up all the oxygen, and then it'll excrete toxins. The water literally looked like a giant tanker holding Hershey's milk chocolate ran into a reef and bled out. Man, I am waiting for another shoe to fall and then have these guys descend down upon us. Okay, so we're about to hit open water. We're at the mouth of the harbor. So this is the other place I like, or point I should say, where I like to tell people to drop a waypoint because coming back home is never a straight line. And so you want to drop a waypoint here so that in dense fog, you don't try to cross that. So at the point of launch, drop one and then another one at the mouth of the harbor. And then visually imprint what the shoreline looks like and look for any conspicuous landmarks 
so that from a distance, if you're a couple of miles out, you can visualize where home is. In terms of conditions, it's forecasted to be a pretty benign day. So swell something like three to four with good intervals. Wind might pick up a little bit above 10, but again, I feel the wind in my face going out, which implies I'll have it at my back coming in, and we always prefer that. So the uh, reef, okay, so this is the jetty wall. So the reef is fairly nearby, so it's about a mile out that way. So on the way to the reef, there really isn't much, and you see all these little uh, bumps? That's actually not the underwater terrain. Those are the swells talking, so it's pretty flat all the way to the reef. As a matter of fact, this entire area is pretty flat basin-ish. So as you can see, we're coming up on the block that's the neighborhood, I would say, of the reef. Probably about, you know, 700 feet away until we start maybe seeing some stuff. But again, it's not just one mark. So it's a series of maybe piles of refuse that they've dropped down. So the approach is you get close to where you think the reef should be and then eyeball the sonar and look for stuff down on the bottom. So here I want to talk about a topic that's pretty important in terms of GPS and navigating to like waypoints and such. You have to understand that all the consumer grade GPS components and this is different if you work for NASA um, but all the stuff that you and I work with, there's always a margin for error. So if you get a waypoint from the internet, assuming you can even trust that source, okay, and you navigate there and you don't see anything, don't give up, okay? You have to understand that 60 feet of water, which is where I'm at, my diameter cone is only about 30 feet. So again, if you get a waypoint, navigate to it, if you don't, find anything right away, just start doing big circles, okay? And if the waypoint is valid, you should run into something at some point. So, you know, stuff picking up. See these like little faint streaks? That's probably kelp, okay? So again, as you near the general area, this is probably kelp, these little vertical streaks. And then it'll get considerably better. Okay, so. Some more good stuff, you know. These individual kind of like squiggly streaks, those are fish. So with the Garmin Echo Map unit, you can draw your own contour map. Even though I have the ocean contour maps, you can draw your own. And the other real cool benefit is, as you are drawing your maps, it lights up in green. So if nothing else, it tells you, hey, this is where you've been, so you don't need to go over the same terrain twice. Really useful feature. So you have to be a little bit precise because dropping down here probably isn't going to get you a lot of action. You want to target these guys, these big swiftly lines right there. So you need to get right on top of them and drop on top of their heads. Here, let me take time to kind of describe this painting in more detail. Because again, you know, I don't do like Arnold Schwarzenegger or get the chopper kind of stuff. You know, I'm trying to get you guys, assuming that you're kind of new to the game, Trying to get you guys past that steep initial learning curve, you know, the, the hard stuff that I had to go through. So anyways, um, this, these red clouds here and here are bait fish, okay? And again, it depends on how precise you are, especially for fish that are kind of like bottom dwellers. They're not super aggressive. I mean, they can be, but typically they're kind of hunkered down and they're not going to go chasing stuff wildly, okay? So if you drop down here, you may not get bit. If you drop down here, you probably will get bit because again, these quickly lines here are bigger fish that are camped out underneath the smaller fin bait fish having lunch. So the distance from here to here could literally be like 20, 30 feet. And that 20, 30 feet could be the difference between you dropping down and not getting bit and you dropping down and picking up a fish. Drop that for you guys, because sharing is caring. Here we go. That didn't take very long. Okay. So 
So, you know, typical quarry, right? Fan bath. So look at this screen, really busy, right? Lots of good stuff, but look at this big red mound right there. That should really draw your attention, okay? So everywhere is good, but right there, if you can get on top of that, that's your best chance. Okay, this feels like a decent sized sand bath. Alright, so not bad. Okay, so truth be told, it was a really slow day. I mean, these two fish that I picked up, I had to work really hard for. I mean, we're talking about fishing in the middle of the day. There's a crazy red tide going on. Uh, Tidesforfishing.com is saying there isn't going to be a lot of water movement. And um, so what you don't see with all these fishing videos is the four to six to eight hours of dead air time because that is not going to sell laundry detergent, right? But that's what fishing is, right? I mean, you got to go out there and if you don't get bit, you got to move, you got to try different things. Um, but anyways, I I'm hoping again to kind of teach you what I've been learning all this time. Okay, so now the conditions are worsening a little bit, right? The wind is picking up. Swells are kind of picking up as well, and they're getting stacked closer to each other. So if it gets any worse than this, we'll probably have to think about heading back. Okay, so predictably, by the mouth of the harbor, water is getting kind of cruddy, kind of noisy. And then this color is a little bit disconcerting as well. So going in, Stay away from the rocks, right? And then make a beeline and hustle through. And you should be okay. Okay, back safe inside the harbor. Only lost three. It's not bad. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful, um, maybe entertaining. I suppose um, better than dealing with cabin fever with this COVID-19 business. Um, so this is a still picture of the big fish of the day. Uh, it was a halibut that was picked up around the reef. Um, I believe he was soaking a small live mackerel at the bottom. Okay, at this point, I'm going to say goodbye. If you have to get out there and have fun, and I understand, okay, please be safe and exercise caution. I mean, regardless of what the public figures say about opening this or not opening this, Use your common sense. Be careful and be safe. And we will see you soon on our next adventure. Bye for now.